Twitter likely has 25% bots or more and not the 5% or less that they've been reporting for the past eight years. And this is not just about Twitter bots being the center of the lawsuit and, and potential purchase of Twitter by Elon Musk. This is part of Twitter hiding an eight year long decline and preventing a death spiral and collapse. Twitter has needed fake people and fake activity to hide its decline. If Twitter had been completely honest and cleared up fake accounts and fake activity, they would have had to report constant drops in users and revenue. And this could have led to even faster drops in both users and revenue. I'll tell you what has been happening with Twitter, I'll tell you about Twitter bots, how they're used and the reason Twitter needs, needed the fake activity, and I'll also go into the, the lawsuit and potential purchase of Twitter and Twitter's future. First, you need to understand the social media sites like Facebook and Twitter, and before them, MySpace and Friendster, are like massive online parties or the hot nightclub. People want to go where the activity is and where the people are. If the place that they're going to, they think is, is the, the place to be and the cool place to be, then they'll keep going there and they'll bring more people there. But once it peaks and people start leaving, then they don't want to be the last ones there. They want to leave and go to the next hot place, go to the next hot party. So a big online party, a big online social media site starts losing people and people leave from that cool place, then they could die. Just like what happened to MySpace. And this is why Twitter was ignoring most of the fake accounts. If real people using Twitter were surrounded by fake and real people, and then there became more and more fake people, then it'd be tough to tell whether there were actually fewer real people. Because people want to interact with real people and not fake people. But they're seeing replies and activity and still think things are happening. Twitter still jumping. So see at the end of this, and I'll explain what this means for the Twitter Elon Musk lawsuits. I'll predict what, what will happen there and what Elon will do with Twitter and my advice for Elon Musk. Let's go into the lies, damn lies, and Twitter statistics. So Twitter bots are a bot program that can post, comment, and reply on Twitter. They can do everything that a normal person can do, a real person in a real account. So Twitter accounts that are mostly or fully automated are considered to be bot or fake accounts. Elon Musk offered to buy Twitter for about $44 billion. And as a public company, Twitter has annual and quarter reports to shareholders and filing with the FEC, the Security Exchange Commission. And they have been claiming that they have fewer than 5% fake accounts. And they've said that their monetizable daily average users is 237 million. Monetizable daily active users is actually something we need to dig into here because that is actually a, a Twitter made up metric. Normally you talk, the reason that Twitter shifted a few years ago from daily active users to monetizable daily active users, their new made up metric, is because the old way of counting things was showing that they were flat for the last, you know, five, six years when they made the shift in like 2019, 2020. They're, they're showing their, their flat growth, no growth, even though everyone else is doubling and tripling. That, that's a bad thing. So they make up a new thing and say, no, no, we're still doubling. Um, but then if there's fake accounts there as well, so instead of being a flat daily active user since 2014, then there's maybe a drop in 20% or maybe a drop in 50% of activity, which would be a huge deal and could have triggered that death spiral. And also, if you have a drop, reporting every year drop, then the advertiser will pay you less. So it'd be a double whammy. Fewer users and fewer money per user because the advertiser would pay less. So they had to, and it also would be headlines. So they had to prevent more people from leaving. And also, if you have the most popular people, people on Twitter, hot singers, actors, Elon Musk, um, politicians and stuff, if they start seeing their user accounts, their follower accounts drop because you're clearing all the fake accounts, then they would also could trigger a mass exodus off of Twitter. So then the story would, would have been this decline. So there have been a lot of um, analysis, um, some scientific, but academics, some not, um, some by various companies, the bottom meter and stuff, and various things are coming up with credible ranges of 15 to 50 15 to 50 percent bots. Most are coming in about 20 to 30 percent bots, but but it's you know, it takes a lot of AI to try and determine whether sophisticated bots are, are real or not. So let me, let me tie this back to the rise and fall of MySpace. MySpace grew rapidly. They grew from about 22 million people in 2005 up to 115 million in 2008. That was their peak. And then they dropped in, to 2011, three years after, to about 60 million when Justin Timberlake bought them for 35 million. That was 15 times less than what News Corp paid for them in 2005 when they had 22 million people, supposedly. But that three-year drop from the peak to Justin Timberlake buying them 
they were still supposedly over just over half of their peak. So that, you know, dropping to 80% of your users or even dropping to half, if you drop to half, you're at full MySpace, where Twitter would have had to say, oh, you know, we went from, you know, 300 million uh, daily active users now to 150 million. That would have been devastating. That would have caused them to, to drop like 15 times in their, in their stock price. So losing 1% to 4% every year was something they didn't want to report. It could have triggered something like a bank run where people just would suddenly want to get out. An advertiser would want to. And understand the motives that Twitter had for, for ignoring it. Let's understand why people use programs to automate accounts and stuff. They're doing it for their own money, influence, or power. So Black Hat used the API, the programming interface, to do things and automate stuff. They can write their own programs with an online services and programming companies that make this easy. So they first make their accounts, and then you have to gather followers. If no one's following your automatic tweets, then you're not doing it. And you have to first get followers. And there's many hashtags like follow me, follow back. There's Facebook groups where people trade following uh, in order to get to build themselves up, to, to start looking bigger. And then the, and also there's services, you know, where you can uh, use Fiverr or, or um, Upwork or contact places in third world countries where you can get inexpensive manual labor and they can get, again, get more activity, either bots or, or cheap labor to do that. So you wanna, wanna get followers and then get people to follow your tweets and to, to interact with them. You wanna know, interact with bigger accounts, you know, real, suppose real accounts and try and get those influencers, those bigger people to follow you. The bots themselves are limited to about, each account limited to about a thousand tweet per day. So if there was 1% bots and normal people tweet 10 times per day, those 1% bots at 1,000 tweets per day could equal all the activity of, of normal people. And you can do that in a more systematic way. So the, the easily caught bots are one that are just being very obvious about it. If you were more sophisticated, using many accounts and a network of activity, you can hide what's going on. So this activity does happen at all sites. If you go to the places that are offering these services, they offered it for LinkedIn, Twitter, um, Facebook, et cetera. So why is it more of a deal for Twitter than it is for Facebook or Instagram, et cetera? Because it's like a yard with weeds. If the good plants start dying, then you're left with mostly and eventually all weeds. So because Twitter was basically dying, then they have a higher share of, of these weeds or bots. Because Facebook was growing, tripling, or Instagram going by 100 times, then all their bot activity is, is less of a thing because there's so much real activity going on. So what does this mean for the lawsuit? So what are Twitter and Elon likely missing? Because if they're using AI to try and catch these things and try and look at the tweet and activity and try and parse that out. They need to go beyond the programs and the activity, the results, and go back where the, the, the money and the people are and look at what programs and companies are offering services. And to, you know, Elon would, would try and talk to those companies, try and flip people who are very active making money doing this stuff and are willing to expose the, the secret. Much like there was a movie by Steven Spielberg uh, starring um, Leonardo DiCaprio called Catch Me If You Can about the real life story of Frank Abagnale. He was someone who had fake checks and then be a pilot, then be a, a doctor and a lawyer. And he then turned and worked with the FBI to catch other people passing fake checks. So we need the same thing for the people who are doing the bot activity. You need to flip some of those people to work against the others who are doing this, this system. And also talking to the companies and having them, you know, who are offering services of automation and help them provide data so that you can figure out who's doing things uh, for good reasons and who's doing things for bad reasons, who's doing things for, for in-between reasons. So then follow the outside money. And that's, a, I think, an easier, more productive activity. Also, you need to look at um, the dark web. Um, there's Russian companies and people offering entire bot armies to do things, to influence um, the, the news stories. Um, 
and there's places where they harvest photos to create fake info and fake profiles, and they're using VPN proxy in the network. So there's going deeper into the ecosystem would be, I think, a more productive way to do it. So what will I think will happen? What will Elon do? I think the deal that Twitter purchased likely still happens, but 20% off. Why would they do this when, why would Elon still do this when there's, um, you know, all this fake activity? Because I believe that he can turn it around, actually grow it. The reason being is that one, he can shift off the advertising, you know, the planning announcement to shift off the advertising revenue and then go to subscription models. He would not have to report as a private company. And then he, he said he's going to try and follow the WeChat, um, the Chinese social media company, which has, is highly profitable and has grown to over a billion users. If Elon can actually grow Twitter, grow its influence for real, then all these issues become less of a thing. But he is purchasing something that's starting off from a lower base than he, what he had hoped to start off with. And the other thing is that, you know, why can Elon grow it and Twitter can't? Um, one, I think the Twitter management was uniquely incompetent around this thing. And then also Elon will have the advantage of the SpaceX Starlink network of satellites to back end high amount of data traffic. Um, when he gets this generation two satellites up in 2024, 2025, those will be five times bigger and will have the data capacity to transmit the entire internet. So then he can go heavy on video, heavy on bandwidth and do things that, um, that Twitter can't. Also, if he starts getting 200 million um, people on Starlink, then he can um, you know, have a larger growing base of, of Twitter users that he can have convert Twitter over to a more productive homepage place for people to, to, to get a wider range of information and videos and stuff. He can also follow more the short video TikTok type approach. Um, and then his growing base of Tesla users by 2030, 2025 could be 100 million to 200 million people. So he he is growing his reach through, through the other means and having a Twitter is a kind of like a makeover project where basically you're buying a rundown building and then fixing it up and turning it around. So I think Elon believes, and I think that he can fix it up and turn it around, especially with all the other resources that he has. So that's what's I think what's going on with Twitter and Twitter bot, you know, why would the, the fake activity allowed to persist and, and get bigger, why it became bigger out of a, a dying company, and then how the lawsuit will go, the actual deal will happen, and and then how Twitter will be turned around by Elon Musk into something more approaching WeChat with a billion users and, and real activity and, and a, a lot of monetization, real monetization. So thanks for listening and talk to you next time.